Okay, welcome to this tutorial for creating controllers for eyeballs. Um, we've created some cartoony eyes which have got eyelids which we're going to be animating a bit later on or we're going to be creating controllers for, for animation a bit later on. And we've created these eyeballs which are controlled by these point helpers over here. So if I select one of these point helpers and move it around you'll see that the eyeball follows it. But at the moment you can see that just one eyeball will move at a time and ideally we want them both to move together. If you right click before you let go of the left mouse button by the way it takes it back to the original place you started. And one of the things I want to do is reduce the size of these point controllers that are out here. So I can select my point controller, go to the edit panel and I can just reduce its size right down because I don't need these ones to be very big. Select this one and take it down as well. Something like that, that's fine. So now I have these two point controllers, I want to create another controller in the middle that I can join these both to and actually move them around. Now there's a number of ways you can do this. What you could do is simply clone one of these and move it into the middle. So I'll quickly show you that and then I'm going to demonstrate another method just to help you know how to do this. So I'm going to go Alt W and I'm going to go to the front view again. So right click to select that Alt W to take that full screen. Here's one of these point helpers. If I hold the Shift key and then move it across, you'll see that I can take it roughly to the middle and I want to make a copy and I can call this the both eyes if I like both eyes main or something like that click OK now I can also change it at the moment it says it's a cross I can change it if I like to a box and I can make it quite a bit bigger if I want and I can then parent or link these two controllers to this middle one and then the middle one will control them both so let's just very briefly do that I'm going to do it in the perspective view because it will be slightly easier. So Alt W, right click to select the perspective view, Alt W to make it full screen. And then I take the select and link tool and I select the controller on this side and link it to our main controller in the middle. Remember you always take the one that is going to be controlled by the one that will control it. So the child is controlled by the parent, so I select the child and I go to the parent. When I let go the parent will flash white to say good contact made. So now I have set up a way of actually moving these around. Now if I now choose my select and move tool and select the box in the middle and I start to move that you'll see that both eyes move together and we've got a control for all the eyeballs which is a nice way of doing it if you want to use point helpers but sometimes people prefer to use different approaches. And the approach that we can take is actually to create an item and then align it to the middle of these two point helpers. And then there's a couple of minor bits and pieces that you need to know to be able to reset its transforms before you can then do linking. And I just want to demonstrate that in case you want to follow that. So I'm going to control Z a few times to get back to where these things aren't controlled. And I don't have a point helper in the middle. Right. So I just have these two items and as you see if I move this around they're independently controlled. Right click when I'm still holding the left mouse button to take that back to its original starting point. So Alt W to go back to four views and then right click on the top view Alt W and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit and pan them across to one side because I'm going to create an ellipse to control these eyes. So I go to my create panel and this time I'm going to go across to shapes when I get to shapes I can create an ellipse so click on ellipse and then draw out an ellipse anywhere in the scene right click so that's now done we've created an ellipse but the ellipse is in a completely separate place to the eyeballs and what we want is this ellipse aligned with these two controllers and if I do Alt W and go to my perspective view I want this ellipse which is way over here aligned with these two point controllers which are controlling my eyes how do I do that? Well, what I want to do is I want to actually use my constraints again. So I select the item that I want to align and I'm going to go to animation and constraints and you'll see that one of the constraints says position constraint. In other words, whatever item I select, so if I select this point helper here, I'm saying that the position of this ellipse has got to match or the center of this ellipse has got to match the center of this item. So I choose position constraint and I choose this particular point helper over here it's positioned right in the middle however that's not right in the middle of both of them that's just right in the middle of one of them if I want them right in the middle of both of them I do the same thing again watch this I go animation constraints 
position constraint and this time I choose the other point object and you'll see that it's set up so that it is right in the middle of both of them and you'll see over here we've got position constraints we've added our position constraints it says we've got two targets and it says that they're weighted 50 percent and what that means is that each of these has a 50 percent control over the position of our ellipse so it means it's bang in the middle if I want to shift it one way or the other I can actually select one of these and change this weighting so if I change it you'll see it shifts one way or the other depending on what I do with weighting so I want it at 50 again right back in the middle now that that's there sometimes you want to be able to see this controller a lot more clearly so what I could do is I could go to my modify panel and with my ellipse selected which I probably ought to rename as my main control main I control I can add say let's try uh, let's add a modifier to it let's add a sweep so we go down and find sweep add sweep and suddenly this item has got a bit of depth and I can play around with the the values its uh, its thickness its length and what have you just to make it look a little bit better so that I can actually see something and I can really grab hold of it and I can choose the select and move but at the moment if I select and move it won't move and there's a reason for this I have aligned it to these point helpers and the point helpers aren't moving so I need to reset its transform properties so that it gets rid of all the constraints on it and has got its transform properties set so that where this item has now been moved to through constraints becomes its zero point or its starting point and to do that you need to hold the alt key down so hold the alt key and right click on the item and then choose freeze transform and this says basically do you want us to get rid of any constraints that are on here so you see here it says freezing the transform involves setting up another layer of controllers you will lose any constraints or animation that are applied to this object well it doesn't matter we've got it in the right place we don't need to keep the constraints anymore we just have it in the right place we just use the constraints to get it to the right place so yes we do want to continue and now the item can be moved around right click to take it back and what we can do is we can link these two controllers to the item that we have created so select and link choose one controller who's your daddy well this item that we've created is the daddy and the same with the other controller who's your daddy this item we've created is my daddy and now when I select with the select and move select this particular item here and I start to move it around both eyes are controlled and I've got a much greater visual feedback however I'm just going to hit the render button and see what it looks like so hit render the controller is showing we didn't want it to show we thought we turned it off on the layer manager well let me show you the layer manager I'm going to choose the layer manager again and open up the controls layer and you'll see that the teapots have come on for all of these items now you won't be able to see the items that don't have any depth to them so the point helpers but now that we've added a bit of depth and a bit of body to this ellipse it's going to render the main eye control so all you need to do is turn off the teapot here saying don't render and now it won't render so I can turn that off and if I hit render production again you'll see that it's just the eyeballs okay so now we have created a main controller that is controlling the two eyeballs we've learnt how to use constraints to move something to the place we want it to be and we've frozen transforms to get rid of those constraints so that we can start from scratch again the only other thing we need to do now is be able to animate or move or control the eyelids we can move the eyes around but if I was at this point I might want the top eyelids a lot higher and the bottom eyelids perhaps a little bit higher so I need to be able to animate those separately and that's what we'll look at in the next tutorial.